Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the frequently asked questions when it comes to creating a brush. How do I make my brush tip more pointy or make it fatter, more grungy, more opaque, deeper impasto? So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we're going to start with that same wood to brush that we had, and we're going to open up the brush creator. We can do that a couple different ways up here, the menu at the top window down here to brush creator, which is keyboard shortcut F5. We're going to bring our properties panel back over. So now we have a brush open in the brush creator that we like, and we want to modify it. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to pen pressure in the size category right here to the right, open curve editor. This, if we want this to be really tiny at the side, we need to bring this left side all the way down and you can adjust this so that there's a bit of a ramp and it starts small. Let's undock this panel, we'll drag it underneath for now. Now, when we push down with the stylus, you can see a line on the curve editor showing how much pressure is being applied. So with a little bit of pressure, we start pushing, notice that we don't see anything on the screen, and this is because we have the wrong mode set here. Let's press keyboard shortcut one, and that's gonna show on the properties panel, we are now in paint mode. Now as we start, notice that we start with a much smaller line, and we can go back with light pressure down to a very light line. Now this is not showing a lot of line here, because with light pressure, we're also affecting opacity. So let's talk through that real quickly. Right here in the opacity tab, the second tab down, on the right side, we have the curve editor, and we have this line right here. Now, while you're learning what the brush creator does, I recommend getting all of the nodes except for one. Let's put this all the way to the top. You can see now with light pressure, we have a significant line it's not as full as this heavy pressure line in the center. With this set all the way up, we know that this setting is not what's causing this lightness here in the beginning. This is coming from another section. So let's look at that. Let's close this and let's move over to the paint option. Here at the bottom, we have canvas texture influence. Now here is where we're seeing this component working. So again, as we're learning, we're going to remove all the other nodes except for one. We're going to set this all the way to the top. Now with heavy pressure, we still get this drawing on the tops of the paper bumps, this texture strength, canvas texture influence at its maximum. If we bring this all the way down, notice that we start out with a nice, rich, line that starts off with a lot of taper that we can build up and come back down to that really skinny narrow line adjusting this with a second node we can start out with that little bit of textured line and then with a little bit more pressure again we can see that pressure line being represented here in this curve editor. Okay, let's set this back and let's reset our brush to default. And let's say we want to make a brush that has a thicker impasto than currently we see. So this means we're going to need to go to oils and acrylics. This is keyboard shortcut shift plus O. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to find a brush that has nice thick impasto. I really enjoy this new metallic brush down here the round brush. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the color up so we can see this impasto better. And we're going to turn on metallics just because it's pretty and, <laughs> and I'm a fan. All right. And now we're going to adjust those settings. Now I mentioned in the last video that while we're adjusting these, my preference is to create a copy of the brush and send it to our favorites. Notice here again, it's been added to the end of our highlighted brush group folder. 
So here we have an impasto height of 54. Let's bring this up to about 100. A little bit more impasto. A little more and all the way up here. Now this is per brush. So this is affecting just the brush level. You can go over to the layers panel at the bottom, keyboard shortcut F12 to bring up visual settings. Visual settings has an impasto depth slider here. We can bring this up for the entire canvas. We're going to leave this again at five, but if you want the absolute most impasto you can do, you can bring it over to 10. Now, the other thing that will affect the impasto here are loading. If we bring our loading low, a little higher, a little higher, all the way to 100. Again, you notice that the amount of loading really affects the impasto of the stroke. All right, let's go to the pencils. I like this Pentel pencil. It's a really nice, clean line. Now, on some computers, when you draw, you'll see a little bit of something called jitter. This is an unintentional movement in the line that makes it not uh, as straight as we are wanting to make it. Hopefully it is never this bad. All right, so in order to fix that, you can go to the properties panel, line smoothing, turn this on, moving average. This will smooth that line, make it a little bit cleaner. If we bring it all the way to the right, it's going to create delay in order to stabilize the line. You can do that same thing with pulled string. Here you have this string, you can see the physics of the string. And this will give you great control no matter what device you're using to create some beautiful arcing lines. All right, let's turn that off. If you want to save it to your brush, you need to click on this icon in the top left corner of line smoothing. This will save it to the brush preset. And then don't forget in the brush creator to click on save changes as default. That's keyboard shortcut control shift B. Now, if you have a brush, let's jump to watercolors and clear the layer. If you have a brush and you want that brush to respond to the paper texture, we're on a beautiful canvas. This is EX29 Yucca. We want this to respond and make a beautiful watercolor stroke, but we want to see the paper coming through. There's a couple things to adjust. Let's go to visual settings and start there. Texture influence. This is going to make a really big difference on how things turn out. If texture influence is set low, we're going to see uh, more of that paper coming through. If texture influence is set high, this is going to create a, an unnatural watercolor look, but you're going to see that there's a lot more texture showing up. Now, this is not the way that I recommend doing it per brush. So let's go ahead and close the visual settings panel and let's look at that. So here in paint, we're using a watercolor brush which is shift plus W. Here's our liner. We're going to copy that brush preset to favorite, select it. This way we're preserving all of these original brushes. This one is saved. It's our new brush. And we're going to paper texture strength right here. We're going to click on the curve editor and we're going to bring this way up high. Notice now as we paint, we're painting on the bumps of the canvas and then starting our diffusion from that place, creating some really beautiful, and this feels so organic, it feels so natural. Now, when it comes to working with watercolors, what I recommend paying close attention to is the water level. Here in the properties panel on the left, you can adjust the water level. If you have a nice brush the water level and the opacity are going to make the most significant difference. Bringing the water level up to 50, bringing it up to 80. Now, if you have a brush like this watercolor brush or a pencil and you don't want the texture of the canvas to have any effect at all, drag this line all the way to the bottom. As you paint, you'll see a very 
clean, very simple line, if you find it diffusing, is interrupting what you're trying to go for. Drag the water down all the way to one, or use a brush or inks, or use one of the dry media that doesn't have water as an option so that you get that really clean line. And then drag this texture strength found at the bottom of paint in the brush creator. Drag that all the way down to nothing, and you'll have that clean line. All right, the last thing we're going to look at in this video is how to make a regular brush more grungy. All right, let's reset our pen tail back to default. Let's pick an express oil brush. That's shift plus A. We have a grunge brush, but let's choose one that's not grungy. Here we have a rough, wet, and we want to add some more depth to this brush. So we can always increase the texture strength, but this is not quite what we're looking for. I'm going to put this up just a little bit, and we're going to do this inside of the textures category. We're going to pick a background texture, and now when we paint our line, we can see that this has added all of this beautiful modeling into the middle of the brush. You can see it right here. And adding a background texture is just one of the ways that you can add more depth to your brushes, add some grungy effects to your brushes using the dual brush underneath we'll talk about further in the coming videos. Hopefully this video has given you a good start so you can tinker around with brushes that you're interested in right now as you're going through the series. While you're working with the brush creator, I recommend enabling and disabling on a regular basis so you can see the effect of what you're doing. This will help you understand better and better what each element and each component of the brush creator controls. All right, thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to be talking about controlling pressure. We're going to be going into a detailed look at pressure controls inside of Rebel 7 brushes.